other words that are synonyms. Jeremy DeChance! Thank you, Tyler. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Hell of a Boss panel. How many of you were at the last panel at Anime Riverside? A few people. How many came to the meetup yesterday for the cosplay? Nice. We got some. Oh, you hosted it. That's that's different. You had to be there. <laughs> All right, so we do have a special surprise for you guys today. Uh, I am not going to be hosting alone. Uh, I'm going to have the wonderful Morgana Ignis joining me. You may know her as Miss Sally May. I'm here because I know how to pronounce everyone's names properly. I see so many amazing cosplayers in the audience right now. Thank you everyone who's been coming to the booths and getting autographs and photos and all of that. You all look amazing. Are you ready to start this fucking panel? Yeah. 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 Alright, the first person we are going to be bringing out right now, but when the mic is in my face, the first person we are going to be bringing out as we go down this list, the voice of Stolen Bryce Pinker! Yeah. We have the voice of our sister Millie, Vivian Nixon! <laughs> Not that, but the other one, the other Vivian. Vivian Nixon, let's go! Vivian! Vivian! Sorry, Vivian Nixon was. It's wrong, I'm but, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't have our Millie without the voice of Moxie Richard Horvath! <laughs> And next up, we have the voice of Hell's Pop Star. We have Christina V as Verasica! <laughs> next up, we have, I've seen a lot of you cosplaying her this weekend. We have the voice of Luna, Erica Linda! <laughs> Remembering to breathe. Sorry, breathing is important. Next up, we have the hell of a boss, the voice of Blitz, Brandon Rogers! And one more person that we actually have as a special guest not announced yet, who's seen the most recent Mammon episode? Who here saw Glitz and Glam Fizzaroli's nemesis that episode? We are bringing out Faye Mata as the voice of Blitz and Blam! <laughs> and obviously none of these people would be here without the creator of Hell of a Boss, we have Vivian Madrano! <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna send you, we're gonna send you right there. Got we're, 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 we are, we are. I'm going to turn it back over to you right now. There we go. All right, guys, let's hear it up for our amazing guest. Are you Jeremy now? Yes. I'm in charge. I wish I was that good looking. I run the show now. <laughs> this is Ryan Rogers. All right, guys, so the way this is going to work, we're going to go back and forth. We're going to ask the cast uh, different questions. Um, just to give you a little feedback here, I'm not part of the show, but I am a huge, huge fan. I have seen every episode multiple times, thanks to my wonderful girlfriend who makes me watch them multiple times. <laughs> she got me this Luna shirt, I have to say that. Um, we are going to go through those questions, and I will be representing you as a fan. We will try to do some audience questions at the end, but there's a chance that we go over. So if we do, don't hold it against us. Please come by the, these booths. Say hi to these people. Ask your questions, your comments, your concerns, your compliments. Uh, without further ado, let's get started with the first question. 
All right, so I, so we, we, we've just finished an amazing musical episode. This entire season has been filled with so many incredible songs. So the first question is actually for several people on, uh, on the panel right now who have had songs this season. We have had some great songs from Bryce, Richard singing, Vivian singing. And so for, for everyone who's been involved in the music aspects of it, I'd love to hear about your experience in working with our... Uh, our, our head of music, Sam Haft, and several of our other songwriters on your, your experience doing the music this season. And I, I have a bonus to that. I, when, when is Blitz getting a song? When's the Blitz song? Yeah, as a fan, I'm waiting for the Blitz song. That's my... He's premiering it today. No, just kidding. Just kidding. You're now live with a new song from Hell of a Boss. <laughs> That's the, that's the concussion song. <laughs> so the question was about music, and uh, as you all know, um, it obviously plays an incredibly important role in our show and, uh, and in uh, the seasons you've seen so far. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to work on the music, especially um, when we record, you know, uh, usually Sam is with us. Uh, and so it's a real collaboration, like these songs are found for the first time in the booth. Uh, yeah, when I, the ones that I've recorded, I'm singing and Sam is giving feedback and Vivian and Richard are giving feedback. So um, they're really created like in a, in, a, in a collaborative soup right there in the, in the booth. So, um, you know, I get a lot of uh, people coming up and, and talking about uh, the song from Lulu Land, and um, I remember recording that song because it was during the pandemic, and I had just um, become a, a father for a second time. Um, my second child had just been born, and a lot of actors, a lot of actors had lost their jobs, and all of those emotions kind of went into that booth and went into that song. So, uh, and that's true. Every time you record something, you bring in whatever you're you're, you're going through, and uh, the music has been an incredible conduit for that in the show, and that's thanks to Viv. We'll just go down the road if that's okay. Had, uh, we had new songs from not not just Billy and Moxie, but specifically Moxine and Millard. And I would I would love to hear from both of you doing that episode, especially how how you were musically recording for that one. On a microphone. Yeah, if you could if you could sing the whole thing now. We'll oh, everybody look at me. <laughs> uh, that was a fun one. Uh, I was blown away by Vivian's uh, Millard part of it. I was so amazed by it. Vivian's already an amazing singer, but this, this song was in a lower key, and I actually asked Vivian Medrano, who's singing Millie's part? And she goes, that's Vivian. I'm like, oh my God, she's amazing, which I already knew, but. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, me. I always think that the demo sounds better. Than <laughs> like, oh, Sam, Sam, you know, you make it. Sam has a, well, everyone who ever does a demo for me, for my character, it's always like way up here. Yes. It's like, everybody look at me. All of you losers wish you could be like me. Anyway, um, and so my key is actually higher than Yeah, we should key. switch keys. I should actually be singing key. your key, yeah. and you should be singing yeah. my key. But it's but fun. we work it out. We always work it out. We always work it out. We always work it out. Millie! Oh. Hey. Oh. <laughs> um, um, yes, it was an absolute joy recording that episode, and Millard was so much fun, because I got to dig into this dude character that I never play, and it was so fun singing like that, and it was awesome. So thank you, Sam Haft. Thank you, Viv Madrano, for giving me the opportunity to just be a guy and play somebody who, you know, I normally wouldn't get to play because my my roots of film, television, and theater, I'm always typecast. And so, right, the sky's the limit in this industry, and I love that. And, and Billy Pesco, I know we only have you for a bit, but I would love to talk with you, especially your song, because you're playing opposite yourself in this oh, show. Thanks. So yeah, this one's for oh, Faye, because yeah. I would love to hear about your Glitz and Glam song, yeah. and the process <laughs> working with Sam on that. <laughs> show 
I mean, I've always, I've always admired his stuff. Uh, I, I voiced Katie Kiljoy in Aspen Hotel, the pilot. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, and I was just, I, I wasn't sure if I would get another opportunity like this again. So I was just really happy. Uh, it has, it sounds very K-poppy, uh, the Clown Bitch song, and I just, I love it. I'm a big uh, KDA. Uh, <laughs> Sam Haft is extremely talented, um, and I admire every single person on this cast. So uh, to be a part of it now is just—it's uh, uh, just—it's just, it's just amazing. So thank you so much. <laughs> hey, uh, we we have already gotten some some bangers from Verasica in in our in our in, so far in the show. But can we mention right now we have more Verasica coming up? In, did, is it is it this season? Is it next? What are we what are we looking at? Yes, <laughs> very soon <laughs> there will be more Verasica um, in this season and more Verasica songs as well. <laughs> And, and how has it been for you? Because I know you've done a lot of music before joining up with the show, but what was it like writing with Sam and working on a you know, song that's on a lot of very weird people's special Spotify playlists, like <laughs> Bone Town? Listen, it really expanded my, um, my resume, um, because now when you search Google, it's not just Christina V. Ladybug, it's Christina V. Vacay to Bone Town. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate expanding my audience. Um, <laughs> um, it's been amazing, and um, I'm a huge musical theater person, so getting to sing songs with these incredibly talented people um, has been has been so awesome, and I love the reception, and I love Brassica, and getting to meet all of you guys, so it's been, it's been such a blessing. How version of blessing, whatever that is. Yeah, it's, it's been a hex. Is that, is that what it is? It's been a hex. It's such a curse. A curse. A curse. Of a, it's been a curse of an experience. Um, we, we've seen so many different character evolutions over the course of this season, and also with our uh, uh, finally revealing episode eight of season one, which is a huge Luna episode. And uh, for Erica, yeah, that's you. I'm talking. I know you. you yeah, you're good. It's, I'm, yeah, yeah, it's, it's for you. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. It's actually for you. It's like, actually for you. She was right distracting now. me with her hot. She was it's like, okay. Like, like, it's okay. This is just us talking now. Christina's, Christina's not even here right now, so this is just us. Don't even talk. Don't even mention that. <laughs> so I would, I would love to ask you about the, the evolution of Luna this season, including us meeting B at the end of season one and how, how you felt evolving with the character, and also how much you knew before recording these episodes once you joined on to the show versus where you are now with her. Um, yeah, I mean, I, when I did the five minute, you know, the pilot, she felt, I mean, I, mean, I, I didn't get to, I mean, she was kind of just like coming in with a witty quip every once in a while, so I didn't really get to like delve into her as a character, because you know, if you're, if you're playing a character correctly, they should be able to run the gamut of emotions, it doesn't matter, and I remember like being a little bit scared, because I went, okay, I'm not just yelling at people to like shut up anymore, you know, or I'm not just saying like, I'm gonna eat your avocado sandwich from this fridge, like, screw all of you, it was like, no, we actually are getting into some meat here, and she was showing her vulnerabilities, so it was really nerve-wracking, so I was like, okay, how do I stay in character and also um, show these different facets of her personality? Um, but it's been really cool and really freeing because I feel like th it, what's what's really cool about this being an original show is like we made these characters, you know, from from the from the beginning, and I have so much freedom to sort of just like be myself and and play. Um, so that's been very gratifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. <laughs> And, and speaking of uh, spe speaking of character evolutions, we we have seen a lot from Blitz this season, not just personally, <laughs> but but with relationships he's had with other characters. You, you've come a long way from where we saw you with Robo Fizz in Lululand to where you and Fizzaroli are now in your friendship and relationship. And I'd love to talk to you, not, not just as a performer, but also somebody who writes with the show, how it's been to take the character to where they're at now at halfway through season two. Well, I, I think a lot of people, it, it was tough when we did the first, uh, like when episode three was coming out, four, like you didn't really see any serious deep sides of Blitz until really like episode six. 
and, and so we had already recorded the back half of season one, and I knew the Blitz was this like well-defined, three-dimensional character, but yet everyone's like, he's silly, because episode three or four is only out, we only think he's, I'm like, oh God, you don't know how deep this character is. But I, do, I think that a lot of people didn't expect for him to be so three-dimensional, because there's a stigma that like, if a character's funny, then they immediately don't have the capability to have their heart broken, to go through a relatable problem, to be dealing with traumas that you know other people go through. People think that comedy characters are just there to be laughed at. People can be two things at once. And I think that Blitz is funny, and he's, you know, he, he has his moments where that aren't his best, but he also, you know, he also has very real feelings that I think people can um, relate to. And I certainly relate to him a lot. I write for him. And uh, he's, he, you know, he's someone who's very near and dear to me, and so when I see other people relating to him too, it, 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 it's very uh, gratifying because it makes me feel in a way, weird way that I'm finding some form of acceptance through other people because I relate to him a lot too. And, um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. I love the range. Thank you. Oh yes, the range, and he's sad and he gets happy. <laughs> and hopefully you and Erica could do a father-daughter song soon. Oh. Oh. Just out the tears. What did you say? Sorry, you guys could do a father-daughter oh, song yeah, soon. Yeah, absolutely. That'd we do so all fun. the time, like, just in our personal That's life. We just sing into that song. We do the drive through just singing to one another. Yeah, that would yeah. actually be very, very fun. I would, I would love that. So, bringing the music question kind of to <laughs> kind of to a close, Vivian, the music is such a big aspect of the show, um, and uh, kind of like every episode, we just had the big musical episode, uh, Mamon's magnificent musical mid-season, uh, as far as my girlfriend calls it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> That's a good one to call. Yeah, and you get to work with like Tony, uh, Tony Broadway voice actors and or, or singers. Um, why, why so much music, and what, what, what element of that uh, do you bring to it? Um, well, I am a massive musical theater fan. I just grew up with. Um, I mean, it, it definitely rooted in the, the early Disney Renaissance movies. Um, because I, I really think that animation goes hand in hand with with musicals like they just you know They require a lot of suspension of disbelief and animation. It, it just like it's so whimsical and so it's paired really well and Animation is, is colorful and it's and it's expressive and it's able to kind of do whatever it wants and I don't know, I just, I've always thought the combination was great, and I obviously am an animator, first and foremost, and a storyteller, first and foremost, but, um, you know, my escape for a while was musical theater. I, I still go to Broadway all the time. I love seeing, like, every single show I can. I love seeing, I've, I've had the amazing honor to see so many members of my cast perform in shows, and... I don't know, like, I, I'm a geek <laughs> when it comes to musical theater, so I, all my projects just feel part of that world. And that, that passion is absolutely there because the songs are banger after banger. Like, I'm so also very good. picky about that. Yeah, yeah. the music <laughs> like, is so good. Being, being a musical theater fan, I, I am you know picky about the music and, and the bar has just kept being raised by like, Sam Haft obviously is amazing, but we also have Andrew Underberg, we have uh, Julian Hornick, we have Andrew Butler, we have so many songwriters, Barry Grip. Um, just brilliant songwriters all across the series, and they all have different styles, and they've all worked in varying degrees of musical theater, um, off Broadway, Broadway, all those things. So, yeah, I just I love it. It's a world I love, and in a world I'm in, and yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, so my next question, kind of for everybody, uh, and we can go down the line again if we would like. However, you're more comfortable. Um, is this all started somewhere? And all of you have done other things before this. I know for a lot of you, um, some of you have done voice acting, but for some of you, you come from a different world. Uh, what was it like getting started with the show, and did you ever see the, the crazy amount of growth uh, happening? Did you, what is that like? What's that experience like? I will say that I thought it was a furry fighting game when I auditioned. <laughs> <laughs> and I've said that on the record many times. I had no idea what this was, um, and I remember, like, I was, oh no, I was hungover when we recorded that pilot. Oh. Oh. I know, I know. You were 
in the I was over 21. Like, come on, man. No, I, uh, yeah, I remember, I remember, like, like stumbling in and, and just going, what? Like, I, and I, I was supposed to have gotten the script, but I didn't. And then you were like, I didn't know I was going to be doing every yeah, female character it was, in the it pilot. Was a like, I, had no, I was like, oh, I'm Luna. And then it was like, we need you to do all the girls. And I was like, okay, cool. So I just, like, made up a bunch of stuff on the fly and... I remember dragging Justin Briner, who's here, not in this room, but uh, he's another voice actor. Uh, I dragged him to the to the premiere of the, yeah, to the screening of the, sh yeah. the screening of the short, and I was like, yeah, there's this thing called Hasbro Hotel, but like she's screening this five minute, you know, thing, and, and then I thought that was going to be the end of it. And I remember seeing the poster, which many of which I've signed today, that same poster, and I saw them, and I just was like, wow, that's that's really cool. And then I went, oh, well, it's probably not going to, you know, go anywhere, whatever. Um, and then it ended up being this crazy thing. You really end up falling just ass backwards into, like, the coolest stuff sometimes. You just have no idea. But, yeah, I'm happy, very happy that I auditioned. And I'm very happy I got to hang on to Luna. Um, yeah, I love, I love Luna. She's great. And now you're on a t-shirt. And so. now I'm on your t-shirt. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so... Erica's response made me think, you know, sometimes the best place to create from is a place without expectation. Um, and that's definitely true for my involvement in this. You know, a Viv wrote to me uh, during the pandemic when, again, there's not much going on. And I said, yeah, I would love to work on something, anything. Um, and I think if I had known what this was, I, I don't know that it would have been as easy to just create something out of the blue. And it's, it's just a constant thing we have to remind ourselves as creative people that sometimes the expectation really gets in the way of the, the, the creative process because you're thinking so much ahead of yourself as opposed to just going, well, what do I think is going to make me laugh today? Or what do I, what's my instinct telling me that this character is? And so I think a lot of the early stuff, I, I think we recorded a lot of season one in, in one or two goes, um, for me anyway, and a lot of it was just instinctual. Um, and I look back at that and think, thank goodness that I didn't know what we were um, embarking on, because it just, it just helped me anyway just take a really fearless approach to it, um, which is something we always try to do, but it's not always easy when think, oh, this is going to be this, and you know, suddenly your nerves start to do this, you know? <laughs> And I think without that expectation, you can really uh, create from a more instinctual, more playful, more childlike place. And, and, and that's certainly at the spirit and heart of, of this show, for sure. That's awesome. Thank you. And Richard, you're not only the voice of Moxie, you are a voice director for the show, and uh, you teach voice classes. Every time I sell a voice class for Richard, I get a little... I don't know who any of these people are. I, I thought this was a Power Rangers panel. <laughs> um, now, I'll tell you, um, yeah, uh, I believed in the show from the beginning, because when I met Vivian, um, my lifelong dream was to be a Broadway actor. That was always my dream. Um, I started in musical theater. The first union I was ever in was Equity. And I remember I was 13 and I was, uh, I was listed as singer-dancer. And I could not have been more proud than anything that I had done since. And when, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> thanks, Mom. Um, <laughs> but um, when Vivian, told me about the show and she told me that it was like she and I just felt we were in love with musical theater in fact when we're in New York together uh, my wife Kristen and Vivian and the group if we can we, we try to go see plays just last week I saw Bryce uh, in, in New York in um, Little Shop of Horrors oh my god <laughs> was really important to me because, you know, I, I was at a, at a point in my career where I was like, oh, uh, YouTube show, I don't know, I'm, you know, I'm a hundred years old, I don't know, um, I'm not really. <laughs> it's yesterday someone said to me, you're not that old, Richard. I'm like, oh, thanks. Um, but, um, but when it came to voice directing, I didn't really know what to expect, and, and I said to Vivian, I asked her, can I voice direct the show? And Vivian said, yes, I would love it. And Vivian had taken my class 
Erica's taken my class. Christina took my class. I did Christina's demo. Yeah, I still for her voice and her demo. <laughs> yeah. Please yeah. sign up for the class. Use code Judy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, to answer your question, uh, to quote uh, Brandon, what was the question? <laughs> um, I think you, I think you answered it pretty clearly. Yeah. But I love hell of a boss, and I, you're gonna love Hasman too. I'll tell you that. Right now. <laughs> Vivian, uh, you got started with, you were coming in for a different role, but then you ended up with this, and you come from acting and uh, TV and theater as well. What was, what's the experience been like? Um, it's been incredible to be a part of this show, first of all. I, my dance background is, I come from a dance background. I actually danced with Ailey too when I was in college and then fell into musical theater and film and television and other things and then said I need to retire, I'm done, I'm done. And a few years later I ran into Cree Summer, she brought her kids to my dance academy and I said, you know, I really miss performing but I don't want to be in front of the camera, like how did you get into this voiceover stuff? And she said, you know, um, go take a class. So I took a class with Charlie Adler, and I put a demo together with my husband in our makeshift recording booth, and um, pitched my demo to the agent I wanted to be with, and they signed me, and I started auditioning. And um, I got to audition for this show. So I originally went in for Keeney. It was during COVID, and I was pregnant, <laughs> and um, this came in, and I was like, yeah, let's put on some heels and squeeze my knees together, and came up with some southern accent, and they were like, yeah, come in, we're, bo we're booking you for Keeney, so I recorded Keeney, and the next day, I got a call from production saying that they wanted me to voice Millie, and I was like, who's Millie, and I look, because I only got a few pages when I recorded Keeney. And I learned that I was opposite Richard Horvitz and I lost my shit. <laughs> I was like, because I came home after recording with you guys and I was like, this guy, Richard, he's amazing. Oh my God, honey, like I want to work with him every day. And then I, now I get to voice opposite him. So it's been an incredible honor of a lifetime to be a part of this cast, a part of this show and a part of this phenomenon that I had no idea existed until I went to my first con and I was like, what the f is this? <laughs> um, you guys are amazing. So thank you for inducting me into this universe. It's been amazing. Really, really fast. She has to run to uh, run back to her booth, but uh, say bye to Faye. She will not be gone bye. long. For, for everyone who's wondering, Glitz and Glam did not get crushed to death at the end of the episode, so she's still in the running! <laughs> and now we move on to Christina here. Where's your booth? Same question. Kind of your experience, and kind of, for you, you've done voice acting uh, for a while, and you have a yes. bunch of different characters. This character's a little different than your other characters, I'd say. Oh! A little different, but I did play Darkness in Konosuba, so it's not that different. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Um, I, I was really lucky. I was uh, offered the role of Rosica, um, and I love Hasman. What was What's happening? Oh, oh, you. We need a buffer. Somebody sit here, please. I can't. I can't work. This is like a strobe light hitting me from the side. This is too much. Um, I, I worked on, I, I'm not going to say Zootopia, because that's not what it's called. Zootopia. <laughs> I keep calling it Zootopia, they're like, who are you? I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I was offered Brassica, and it was during COVID, and everything was a blur at that time, honestly. It was so stressful at first to be in a pandemic. I'm sure you guys can relate. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be alive, and he, wait, no, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I'm just, I'm great, hashtag, I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Brendan, you also come from kind of a different world, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is your first voiceover. It okay. is. It, yes, I was doing YouTube. Yeah, I am. I am. You might have heard of it. You might have heard of it. It's on my 
website. And uh, I was doing, uh, and, and Viv, uh, very professionally, by the way, went through all the right channels, went through my manager, my manager told me, hey, this kid wants to do a, a animated thing with you, and I, I just said, sure. And then you wanted me to write for the damn thing. And, uh, <laughs> and Viv sat across from me at a table, we met at a Starbucks, and there was a, uh, uh, there was, what was it, two or three shows, there was a few of them, and you had the poster, like the characters lined up for these three, and she was like, which show do you like the most? And then I see th these characters, I, there was Blitz, Moxie, Millie, and Stolas, and I'm just like, wow, it's like a, you got the three kids, and then the villain, and the, uh, <laughs> it looks cool, and, uh, and... Blitzy? <laughs> My heart flutter the way it is, is a villainous act, Bryce. <laughs> oh, there you go! Every time he does that, it's a British jump scare. <laughs> uh, what was I doing before YouTube? Uh, I was, um, turning tricks, uh, I was doing, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I went to high school, and then before that I was, I uh, ate too many carrots as a toddler and my pigment turned orange, believe it or not. And then before that, I was in my dad's nuts. So, so you were at a Starbucks and you were basically a pitch meeting. These are three different shows, here are the posters. Uh, which one you like? Am I, misquote, am I misquoting that? <laughs> No, that was exactly how it went. And I, I remember being really surprised because, yeah, like, I, I was super not confident in my writing ability at the time. And so I was like, here's this hilarious YouTuber. I was a big fan. Uh, I wanted you to voice and I wanted Aww. you to write. And you were like, yeah, so I'm free on Sundays and, like, whatever. And I'm, I'm used to... Well, I, Sundays, I, had, I forgot about that. <laughs> I've, I've, um, I've had a lot of generals in my career, like general meetings with companies and with actors and with lots of things and that was the first time because i'm so used to i'm used to like having those meetings and then maybe i'll hear back like a month later or like something like that you know like i'll reach out and wait um and you were just like yeah no like i'm free on sundays and like you know this or that and i was like like it's like you mean like right now like can we, can we start after, and that's actually after church obviously <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. you i made you come to my apartment at one time and, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's gonna have to be um, here so i was like i was like yeah and so we I remember we, yeah, and so we just started right away, and that was during Hasbin's pilot was still being made. So we were still working on that, and then we started writing Helva's pilot, and that was why it was so soon after Hasbin's release. Like it was actually not that far afterwards, and uh, it was it was amazing. Like I was so honored, and I was also honored because you kind of like in a way helped me, like kind of forced me to write too, because you were really busy, and you know, so we'd write together, and then I was the one kind of like physically screenplaying it. It and was like I was, a school assignment. Like, yes. we were, we were like, we gotta get together, we gotta finish this gotta episode, finish it. it's due by Friday. Exactly, and so, and so, um, and I, I like tr truly owe you the world, because I have fallen in love with writing, no, no. with screenplay writing. I owe you, it's exactly the opposite. My life is, not all of our lives are changed because of, because you made something that you thought was good, you weren't trying to pander to whatever you thought the internet was wanting. So, really, never once have I seen Viv go like, well, what, what is, what is people, who people want? No, it's all these characters are so true to her, and, and nothing is greenlit unless she fully believes in it, and, and that's how you get people that relate to it. Oh, you're a real you. I don't know if you heard that. I you're did a real hear that. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. But no, um, I'm so honored by everything about the project. So. And I just want to say, Stolas, you can stop me if I'm if I'm uh, wrong about this bit. But I, what Stolas was originally supposed to be a lot darker, wasn't he it? He was actually. You you can all thank Brandon because there was a very early on meeting. Because in the beginning, the, the pilot is obviously most people probably noticed by now. The pilot's very different from what the series kind of ended up being. Um, and it was after the pilot when we were when I was like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make this. This is gonna be a show. Um, and things were changing, and we were mapping out the whole season and everything like that. Um, I asked you. I was like, so I kind of I kind of like the idea that Stolas and Blitz might might be like an actual thing. Like, do you do you like? Is that a, something you like? Been. And you were like, yeah. And then so now the show is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so could, if you had said no, it might have been a very different show. Don't, you don't, did don't that for me, Blitzy. <laughs> 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 right. 
Bryce really fucked over the plot by being too adorable with the way he yeah. voiced Solus. It's well, like, then, how are you gonna make this dark? I will say, yeah, that also, like, um, Bryce, you, you stepping into the role also very much changed the character, in my opinion, vastly for the better, because you are, you're just, it's impossible to hate Stolas, at least in my opinion. I think he's so, such an amazing character. I'm, I'm very biased, I love writing for him. Um, but yeah, I think I think when we decided that that night at Lancer's Restaurant in Burbank, that the, the the tone of the show and everything like just completely changed. And I think for obviously for the better. I adore this story. Obviously, I'm, we're only part way through it, but we're much farther ahead in writing, and so excited to see where it goes. And it's, it's such depth because he, he goes from that, and then he did have a dark moment in the episode where he comes to the rescue, yeah. uh, and that was that was cool. That was Stolas, a different Stolas, and I love that. So, good job. Spooky. Yeah, it's always fun when you get to those moments. Um, like Brandon said, you know, a funny character, you don't think they have uh, the chance to have their heart broken. It's, it's similar when you get to do something completely different from what the audience has come to expect, mm -hmm. because that's when uh, you feel a character starting to get built out. The complexity started to come in, and honestly, they become more human to me, because we all have all these sides in us, right? And so when when we get to see those um, come out, it's always a thrill as an actor to get to do a completely different side, a shadow side of a character. Yeah, I really like that that you're not you're not afraid to go really high but also really low. I think the juxtaposition of that is like it really smacks you in the face every time, and I like that. I want to go to like the extremes, you know. Relatable. Yeah, it's 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 hashtag relatable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think one of you know a, a testament to the writing is you know how much we as performers get attached to these characters in, in some really major ways. We're able to really empathize on an emotional level with them. I know for me, you know, for Sally, I find a lot of common ground with her. Sassy, tall, unsolved murders. But for the rest of you, <laughs> I, would, I would love to hear from each of you if you have one defining characteristic of your character that you identify with most that really makes you feel connected to them. Let's start with Oh, well, Blitz is an entrepreneur with a small amount of people that work for him, trying to be a name that's taken seriously. I mean, Blitz and I have very similar struggles. I'm not murderous, but uh, but I, I, I get to, I get a lot of Blitz's character is defined by him. You know, he's an imp. He's the lowest of the low in hell, and he's actually trying to make a name for himself, something more than most demons are trying to do. You know, so he ha he's faced with this like kind of. I mean, he's he, it's funny because he's a little. Tiny guy, but he's the tallest of the little tiny. You know what I mean? Like not physically, but also you know inside. And I think that um, I, that's something I relate to, as I've always felt like um, you know it, it's it's hard to be uh, a comedian on the internet with my brand of humor. You know, and 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 you know have producers you know give you a, a chance to be on a show that that blows up the way, you know, the fraction of the way this one did. And so, um, I relate to Blitz, I relate to, and also, I love daddies. And, um, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Come on. Yeah. That's a direct quote, you can tweet that. <laughs> I don't like daddies, I love them. Anyways, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, so I relate to a lot of things with Blitz. Most, most everything, except he kills people, he's red, has horns this tall, but beyond that, we... And by the way, he's not eating ketchup with his cheese. I just want to... Some of the comments said they thought it was ketchup he puts on his cheese. No, 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 that's, that is hot sauce. It's like ketchup, that's fucking slander. No, yeah, that's, that's the one, and I still eat at least once a day. Yeah, Blitz does that because that was when when I came to your house, we did a live stream together, and you just went to the fridge, you got a piece of yeah. cheese out, and you started putting hot sauce on it. Yeah, and I was like, nice. Nice. <laughs> and, then, and then Adam was like, "Yeah, he, that's how he eats." And did I was he like, did doing that. Blitz literally use that as like a expletive? I didn't write that in. She yeah. canonized <laughs> everything. That we eat the same stuff, apparently. Well, it was it was originally the line was originally like cheese and crackers, and we were like. Okay, maybe that's a little oh, too late. And, and, and so we changed said. it, yeah. 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 Anyway. Hello. <laughs> Shitty exes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. In your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I have a lot of similarities with Winna. I think for better and worse, I have a lot of primal rage and anger inside of me. 
but I'm also on that by that same token like primally at my core very protective of the people that I love and I think that Luna um, Luna definitely is that and, and embodies that actually not to get too dark here but um, <clears throat> it's so funny hell of a boss is my parents favorite thing my, my mother's definitely favorite thing she loves it and my dad um, I, so my, par my partner passed away last year um, of cancer, and it was obviously like incredibly traumatic. Um, and my dad texted me a couple months ago that he had watched, I don't wanna cry, the Luna and Octavia scene, and he was like, you know, I'm trying to, like I might not always get it right to be there for you and be supportive of you, but I'm doing my best and I'm trying, and it just like really, you know, it really like hit me hard. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I definitely, yeah, she's, she's just a great character. It's really, yeah. The, the, fact, the fact that this show can even like hit my parents hard in that way, or like they can resonate with them is pretty, pretty crazy, so, yeah. My dad's not much of a gamer. <laughs> yeah. I'm a gamer. I love <laughs> you are. Um, so, uh, when I had the opportunity to step into this role, I also stepped into the role of mother. And um, I learned to love an unconditional love, an unexplainable love. Um, an intangible love that I never knew before, the kind of love that I have with my Moxie. And that's how I relate to Millie in that way, and that very love is what, that love is what drives this very primal, feral, badass fight of assassin. No pressure, but those answers were really good, Richard. I know. <laughs> um, I learned to love unconditionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, musical theater, always musical. It, the question was, how are we like our characters? Yeah, what, what, what's, what's a defining character? That's the question. Okay. Best, um, yeah. Musical theater. Um, uh, neurotic. <laughs> um, insecure. Um, he is. Not always, but I mean, the, I think Moxie definitely has his insecurities, right, Viv? Right? Oh, yeah. I make sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, he is um, not a possum. Yeah, he's not a possum! I swear, one more possum at my table, I know you're out there! Uh, <laughs> I think also there's a um, there's a sensitivity about Moxie. Like if you look at the, the episode where we're gonna like kill an entire family, Moxie's the one like, <laughs> wait a minute, sir. <laughs> um, but I'm also a lot like Crimson. <laughs> no. no, I'm not. Although that's my favorite one of my favorite episodes. Yes, it is. It's one of my favorite episodes. Um, but I also think that um, Love and understanding of relationships and a romantic. I'm a romantic, although. Kristen, my lovely wife, do you agree? <laughs> oh, she left. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm romantic. I believe in romance. I believe in love. Um, and I do believe that that is the answer to everything. Even though I'm not always as sensitive as I could be, but I think that. That's the, the, the lesson of life, that love, love can't conquer all. Yes. Frickin' Eric has got me crying right now. <laughs> yeah, um, I just wanna thank everyone on the table for their, for their vulnerability and their answers. It's a great question, and the answers have been amazing. I've learned something about each of you, so thank you for that. Um, I would say, first of all, obviously I came into the uh, character as a theater performer missing the stage, and um, something about Stolas and just his 
uh, histrionics and his dramatics and his um, performative uh, nature, I identified with um, as a as a child who needed an outlet. In my first grade uh, parent-teacher conference, my teacher said to my parents, I need you to find your son an outlet for his reckless creativity. Uh, please find him a stage other than my classroom. Uh, and so I th think ever since that time, I've been finding a way uh, to express feelings that I don't understand or energy I don't understand through uh, performance and, and, and I, the more I got to know Stolas, the more I felt like he has a, a pain in his heart that he doesn't quite understand um, and that the dramatics that uh, he sometimes portrays are maybe a way of getting beyond that pain or trying to understand it more. Uh, and then of course there's the connection to his daughter, and uh, when we started the show, I had only recently become a father to my daughter, um, and that was a really new and raw uh, experience of the world uh, that I'm still in. <laughs> but uh, uh, so, so I obviously connect to his um, his fatherly conundrums, um, and and then the singing. You know, I can't deny how much the the, the being able to express through song is something that that I've always felt as well, uh, that when, when words don't really suffice, sometimes music is the, is the answer to, to trying to get something across. So um, all of those things combined. And then, yeah, every now and then, a little bit of demon rage feels good to get out to. <laughs> um, that's my answer, thank you. Thank you all so much. On, on that same vein, you know, we've heard from everyone performing the characters, but I'd love to turn that same question over to you, Viv, and have you talk a little bit about the themes that we've exper experienced this season and how they've come from a personal place with you. You know, what, what have we explored this season and what are you excited to get more into in the second half of season two? Oh man, I mean, there's so many themes. Um, a lot of the story, I mean, at this point, um, you know, I, I am also like, in terms of storytelling, I'm a hopeless romantic. I love telling romance stories. I also love angst, so there's plenty of both of that in this in this show. Um, because yeah, like, I don't think I set out to make it a, like a romance story at the heart of it, but you know, that's what it turned into, and I'm so glad it did, because I think that it's a really complicated one. And obviously the characters, um, are, are very complex, and both uh, Blitz and Stolas kind of come from kind of hard, you know, upbringings and, and, and situations that they both kind of are handling in different ways. And a, a big theme of the show um, is overcoming that hardship and abuse. The latest episode, obviously, is a very specific one about exploitation and about, um, you know, kind of being a creator or performer and kind of having that pressure on you to be perfect or to, um, you know, to, you know, be right for the, the, the idol in your life and things like that. And I think overcoming those hardships is really important to me and it's something that I've had to live through and I don't know, I feel it's very important to put into my work and into my projects. It's also sometimes the safest place to put that trauma is into your work because sometimes there's nowhere that can go other than therapy <laughs> so you know um, expensive yeah so the show is expensive therapy <laughs> as well <laughs> i'll add something to that and and, and 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 there's not a nicer term for this but i think those who don't are too young to get this won't get the word but um I mean, this show is basically a cum dumpster for a lot of our traumas as writers. <laughs> there's so much, we don't, we only write what we know. So when you yes. see a traumatic experience happen, it's not like we think this is what it's like to go through that thing. Yeah. No, we've gone through it. One yeah. of us has. Yeah, exactly. Beautifully said. <laughs> Yeah, whenever you see something like that on screen, you just know someone on the writing staff or someone someone went through this. <laughs> it comes from a real place. But yeah, that's that's always what's very important to me about the show. And, and season two, obviously, um, we're halfway through it, and so we have another half to go, but I think that everything's been set up for that second half, and it's gonna be a very emotional second half, and I'm very oh, no. with my so, ready. Uh, the, the stage producer came and <laughs> pulled me off stage to tell us we're running a little low on time, so we're going to move on to what's next. He brought me back there. I knocked him out. 
So we probably got about 10 minutes before he gets up and yells at me again. Uh, oh, we so can we're, do a lot in 10 minutes. So, yeah, we can do a lot in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on to what's coming next. But I do, there was a small child who asked me to ask you a question. I and I'm going to ask him that question. <laughs> small child. Right, aren't you glad you said that now? <laughs> well, they, they think it's a real dumpster. Don't Google that. Um, <laughs> so her name is Crimini. Our, their name is Crimini. Um, and they wanted to ask, uh, what was the name of the little boy in the episode who did the sign language, and why the sign language? You know, you know, sometimes characters aren't given, like, official names on production, just because production is production, if it's not said, and sometimes we just don't think of it. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to come up with a bad name on the spot, but... Crimini is a good name. <laughs> Crimini is a cute name. Um, <coughs> what about Oliver? Like twist. Oh. <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what is coming up and what people can look forward to uh, from your characters or from the show. Spoiler time. Musical, <laughs> when the Blitz song is happening. <laughs> Sooner than you think, actually. Oh, wait, so we're confirming this. I have not said anything about this. That just came out of your mouth, so. Well, You're I welcome. Can, I, can, I can share that we may or may not have recorded in a season two episode a, a Blitz and Stolas song. <laughs> what? The context of which you will find out eventually. My heart. My heart. <laughs> it, is, it is horrifying. I'm just saying, going into a duet with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and what he's capable of, I... I I'm very honored to have been a part of that. <laughs> um, what else can we expect um, from your characters? Bryce, do you want to... What can you say to under NDA? And... <laughs> She's right here, so don't get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> well, I think, I, I think Stolas continues to try to find his truest self and is in pursuit of that in relationship to um, some big feelings that he has um, for a certain imp, and uh, the complexities that surround that, um, and, you know, I, I think that you're going to see um, Stolas working through things he's never had to work through before, um, because of who he is and who he was born into being, and uh, I'm really excited. I was really excited to record it and excited for it to be out there and and, and see the, the you know, um, as people grow, sometimes it feels like they're peeling away layers of things they don't need. Um, and I, I think that's going to continue to happen for Stolas. Uh, from Oxy, uh, you can expect him to be in more episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Until his death. Oh my god, did I just say what? Sorry, guys. What? what? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> not supposed to know yet. <laughs> That'll be out there in five minutes. That's not true. It was a joke. There's never, was a joke. There's never a good time to fire a voice actor. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's going to be more Moxie. Singing, yeah. and loving, oh. Oh. and killing, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to say, Viv. We're, we're being me. cut off, again, but, given, but given that there's, there's a sniper or a scope on each one yeah, of us right. right now, not to reveal anything, Viv, before we end, anything we want to reveal that's coming up to the channel, anything that's being worked on right now that we can look forward to in the next few months, so yeah. what are we looking at on, on the channel? Absolutely. So, um, so some people have asked when to expect the next episode. Um, unfortunately, to, uh, the next episode will not come out until sometimes the next year. Yeah, don't open um, with that. Don't open with yeah. that. <laughs> but, 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 in December, uh, we haven't confirmed a date yet, but in December you will be getting an amazing music video. It is a Stola song. <laughs> gorgeous song. It was actually originally a fan song that we collaborated with to make canon and it is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous and we put our all into the visuals of it and I'm so excited. So, so I was just 
just gonna say, I just can, can, can um, the, the Blitz puppet in the front row just take a bow, please? <laughs> we, we all know what video that's from. I saw your YouTube video. That's Bunny Wolf Cosplay, who hooks to the cosplay yeah, gallery. Wolf Bunny, cos wolf wolf bunny, bunny Cosplay. cosplay. Quite a puppet maker, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, so that brings us to the close of the panel. I want to thank our amazing cast and my lovely co-host for helping me through this. Uh, we had such a good time. Uh, we're going to take a quick picture with everybody, and then we have to get off the stage. I will be on the next panel arguing Jujutsu Kaisen versus Naruto. So if you want to hang out for that, we're going to do some comedy. Um, and, and come visit us at our booths. And also, I'm still in the show. There will be more Sally <laughs> All right, so, so stand up for a picture real fast, and we'll get one with the whole crowd if you guys want to do it. Somebody with husband, but there are children. There are children. I will come down there. Do you guys want to stand right here and see the picture? Oh. Well, Vivian, come back. Vivian, come back. You can blame it all on me. I was wrong. Thank you!